From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. The biggest week there was continues overnight as shocking details comes in as the PCEI, an inflationary benchmark used by the Federal Reserve, shows that inflation has not gone down. That's as the earnings recession continues, more companies missing on that earnings front then some not. All the latest details across the board. Unemployment's likely to surge higher this week. Why are the latest breaking news? And then finally, the raise of your benefits are happening. Why? Because inflation's not peaked. About $5,000. Well, have the latest details in tonight's recording. But that, my friends, is why you have to get a force to most check in every U.S. state. About $100,000, you qualify. And in this recording, we'll go over these huge sums of money, these force to most checks. You go get them. They're not going to be any other checks. That's why the value of this membership has gone through the roof. Done by executive action from Joseph Biden in the month of March, these huge checks are now available, and they're about $100,000, and you qualify for them. We'll go over these incredible checks later in this recording. Plus, we'll be looking to the new week because last, last week was tumultuous. It's not done there yet. Earnings recession just starting as more companies continue to miss, but then some meet, beat. Why is this? We'll analyze why your benefits are going up so much. Plus, we'll look at the latest details on housing. And we have a shocker of news stories as a series of items that we thought were going one way are going another way. What's going on? I'll have the latest details tonight. First, we have gasoline prices dropping to the lowest levels since Putin invaded Ukraine. We have lumber dropping dramatically. We have corn and wheat dropping dramatically. And then, on the other front, we have inflation out of control. We have recession out of control. And we have the earnings fronts not particularly good as labor gets worse across the board. Are we coming out of the bear market? Has the bear market ended? That's the breaking news story tonight as well. I'll be analyzing that major confusing point as stocks are on a rally, major rally, in less than 14 days. Are things turning the course? Are things getting better? Are they getting worse? We're going to look at the analysis tonight. We're going to look at how to learn from the analysis. We're going to look at the major issues that determine your money. It's an important recording because things are going left and right. We'll analyze them together. You deserve these four stimulus checks. Go under this video, become a member, and stay the second half as we go over the big sums of money that are available for you. Become a member to America's Most Watched Show in Prime Time, which starts right now. Good evening, everybody. That's a beautiful night here along the coast for July 30th, 2022. The biggest week that was got even bigger. As right after the close yesterday, we got a shocker of data. And what was that shocking data? The PCEI release, and it showed that inflation has not gone down. Plus, we have the latest details on earnings from Intel, and they were a major miss. But other companies were a beat. Let's go over the breaking news starting right now. In three major question marks we started this week, everything came exactly as I projected. Number one, I said Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates 75 basis point on Wednesday. They did. Number two, I said we're going to have an announced recession on Thursday. Two consecutive negative quarters of GDP growth. We did. Number three, I said that labor was going to post 260,000 new jobless claims, the highest number since 2021. It did. Tonight, we have a major question mark. Why are certain parts of the economy getting so good so quickly, turning the course and changing dramatically when we think, see things like the 30-year mortgage rate getting incredibly great in less than 48 hours? And I'm not just being superlative here. It's dropping like a sack of bricks. And then over on another front, gasoline prices are the lowest since Putin invaded Ukraine. What's happening? Meantime, are we out of the bear market selling a bull market for the stock market? It's very confusing, but we're going to analyze all the details starting right now. We start with that major news story, which is after the close Friday. The personal income expenditure number was released. It's one of the core benchmarks that are used for inflation. This is, in fact, the benchmark the Federal Reserve traditionally used until just recently. The personal consumption expenditure price index rose 6.8% for the month of June. 
sec the biggest recorded rise in history since 1982. So what is this number? Inflation. And why is this important? It tells you inflation has not peaked. Inflation is still going up. How significant is this number? It's very significant. We talked about it all this week. We were watching for this number for the following reasons. This is the most up-to-date inflation number we have. The CPI, the PPI, the retail sales released two weeks ago. They're coming about another two weeks from now. So this is in between that data. And here we go. It shows that inflation has not peaked at all. It's still going up. And when you exclude food and energy, the core PCE still increased 5% for the year to date. It's actually 4.8%. We also saw after the close of the market yesterday, more corporate earnings coming in, and some companies were majorly missing while other companies were hideously beating. What went on? Intel reported corporate earnings after the close, and their revenue declined by 22% year-to-date when they missed consensus by 14%, the lowest disappointment since 1999. Meantime, the latest details on other companies are shocking. As detailed on Allied in recent days, Twitter and Snap social media missed. Technologies like Alphabet and and Google, Alphabet and Microsoft missed, Chipotle missed. But after the close, we thought that Amazon was going to miss because Walmart missed. Amazon didn't miss. Amazon beat royally. We thought Apple was going to miss because Alphabet and Microsoft missed. Apple beat. And Roku beat as well. So what do we have on that earnings front? So far, what we see in this economy is certain swaths of this economy are being hit badly by that recession, and other industries are not. The ones that hurt dramatically in this week's numbers were technology, social media. The ones that beat dramatically were travel and leisure, everything from Hilton to Royal Caribbean, all the cruise stocks. Also, when you look at automotive, like Ford had huge, great numbers, and then yet on retail was a mixed bag. So Walmart's set to report in just a few weeks, but they already gave guidance downward, and yet Amazon beat this week. Shocker across the news. Now, we also learned the following details overnight, and that is that the 20, the 30-year mortgage rate has dropped dramatically. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> What's going on? This is confusing. In a major shocker, I had to actually look at it twice. The 30-year fixed mortgage which you would have presumed went up this week because the Federal Reserve raised interest rates 75 basis point on Wednesday. The 30-year mortgage rate has dropped so astronomically, people are shocked and can't explain it. Let me tell you what's going on. Mortgages to buy a home, 30-year mortgages were tracking at a record high of 6% just 30 days ago. Then, let's look at this. On Wednesday... It had fallen to 5.4%, 5.4% on Wednesday. On Thursday, it fell all the way to 5.22%. It fell almost a third of a percent in 24 hours. It's leaving many people dumb, dumbstruck. In a way, mortgage investors are trying to get ahead of the game. They're holding mortgage rates at a higher rate. They'll lose their money if, they lo if, they, if the loans refinance too quickly, says Mortgage Daily News. Moreover, they believe that, that this is an exceptionally fast drop. This, my friends, is why you have to get a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. It's an economy that's very confusing at the moment. And I'm going to explain more about this economy for you in just a second. You got to get this forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. These are the only checks that are there. These are available. Viewers are getting them, and you're going to meet in a second one viewer who got 80 of these checks. Get that incredible financial freedom. Go under this video, become a member. Welcome to the nearly 100 200 new members in less than 48 hours. Massive membership growth on this channel the last two days, and I'll tell you why. It's because there are no other checks except the checks here. We'll be going over those incredible checks in just a second. Because that inflationary number came out of control on Friday, the PCEI, well, guess what's going to happen? Your benefits are going up in a lot. This is time to do a pair dance at your home. Get up and start to wiggle right now. Because guess what? Inflation has not peaked. And your benefits are going up a lot, potentially $5,000. Let's do the calculation right now. First, we need to understand that inflation has not peaked. It started no less than two weeks ago when the CPI beat. 
then the producer price index beat, and then the retail sales beat. Let's go over the detail of that. The consumer price index gauges the consumer products you buy, like milk and eggs, went up high in the month of May, 8.6%. Then that inflationary number, the CPI, in the month of June went even higher, 8.6% of May. Well, June was supposed to be 8.8. It went to 9.1%, the highest recorded since 1981. It's not good. Inflation's out of control, but it's great news for your benefits because your benefits are going up the highest of your lifetime now. I'll explain that detail in just a second. It followed the next day, that was July 14th, when the PPI was released, that producer price index gauges what producers wholesales are paying for products, and that number is the second highest rise in recorded history. That was 11.3%. The day after that, the retail sales showed that the products you bought in the stores went up higher across the board. So that brings us back to your benefits. We're looking for your benefits to get in sense of where inflation is right now because you saw that CPI, PPI, and retail sales were back on July 13th. What are they tonight? Well, tonight we have the data. Tonight we have the data for July 30th, about 14, 15, 16 days later. It's the PCEI. It's a very helpful data point. Why? Because it's very reliable. Number two, it comes between the CPIs. So we get this number in between the next time we get a CPI, which is about two weeks from now. And what does the number show? It shows it straight up. It shows that the personal consumption expenditure index number, this inflationary number, has not peaked. It's still going up. So your benefits are going up astronomically. And one viewer, I think it was either Diane or Lynn, asked me a few days ago, when are we going to get a real good sense of where this benefit lifts is going to come in? And I said, you know what? If we get some clear data by halfway through, then we may have a good sense of it. I understand July 30th. I understand this PCEI has been released. We need really one more data point to show maybe another two weeks from now, probably the next CPI, that shows we're not going down. We're still high or going higher in this case. That will understand your benefits are going up a lot. All right, let's go over how the benefits go up and why this was such great news tonight with that PCEI. I told you this was the, the, the number to watch this week. If you're on benefits, this was the number to watch. Let's go over how this works. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, and that COLA, C-O-L-A, is determined by another number called the CPI-W. There it is again. That subsection of the CPI called the CPI-W determines how much your benefits go up, but not for the whole year. We only look at three months of the CPI-W. They are July where we are right now, August, and then September. The data comes in 30 days after that. And if those numbers remain as high as that CPI was back on July 13th, 14th, and 15th, then your benefits are going up an astronomical amount. So the breaking news first tonight is that we, for since July 13th, have said we need to watch the data. We need to see the data if the, if the inflation is still as high or going higher since July 13th. We've been saying this every night. Tonight, we know it's actually gone higher. Congratulations. It doesn't really feel good. It really feels good. So now let's go over the calculation. You need to see this number as high as it was in the month of June in July. Well, that's what's going on right now. Breaking news tonight. Then in August and then September. Okay, let's go over the calculation. How does it work? Automatic. Automatic if you're on benefits. Whose benefits? Yours. If you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, railroad benefits, veterans benefits. Same amount of raise, everyone gets 5,000? No. Some will get more, some will get less, some will get right on the money. Same percentage raise? Absolutely. You don't have to do it. Everyone gets the automatic same percentage raise, the highest of your lifetime. Because once your benefits go up, they never go down. I had one viewer reach out to one of the volunteers last night. Clearly, this viewer had not been watching the videos. The viewer said, whatever happened to the present swapping cola for inflation? You don't have to do that anymore because you are locked into that inflation so high because of the CPI-W. Let's also make this clear as well. 
you don't have to wait for fifth stimulus to raise your benefits anymore. It's happening. And you don't have to wait for SS300 because this, my friends, is probably SS400. It's that great news. So we have two more data points we have to watch. That is August and that is September. But we may get a really good sense in less than two weeks if this continues on the trajectory it is tonight. Congratulations. Now, let's go back into the other major developing story, which you know what it is, that came in on Thursday. We were talking about this all last week. But we started talking about this in February. In fact, last year. Last year, in spring of last year, I was the only American financial broadcaster report that I believed we were going to have inflation and it was not going to be temporary transitory. Jay Powell, the Federal Reserve of Wall Street, said we were going to have 2 to 3% inflation and temporary. I said, no, it's going to be 8% and prolonged. You just saw the PCEI just really shows that inflation is still going up. It has not been temporary or transitory. In fact, it's not peaked. In February this year, I said that a recession's coming to the U.S. economy. And at the time, people looked at me like I was crazy. They really thought I was crazy. And what were we looking for? We were looking for unemployment numbers. We were looking for weaker, weaker retail sales. We actually, mean weaker uh, corporate earnings. And I said, a recession's coming, this was coming to this economy. Then, three weeks ago, the Atlanta Fed GDP Now was released. It's a live tracking tool that gives you a sense of where this economy is. And it was released on July 1, stating that the second quarter just ended on June 30th, that they, based upon their live tracking tool that has a 30-year perfect record, showed negative GDP growth in the second quarter of this year. I told you all last week that this Thursday's announcement, this coming last Thursday, was going to announce a recession. And guess what happened? You know the story. That Thursday morning, the Department of Labor announced exactly what we knew they were going to announce. The second quarter of this U.S. economy posted a negative GDP growth. GDP is the gross national product. The definition of recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. That's six months. And that announcement came from Department on Labor on Thursday. You are in a recession, have been in recession now because two negative quarters have posted. What happened after the news came out? The President of the United States addressed the American public and said, we're not in recession. Janet Yellen, your Treasury Secretary, said, I'm not going to do semantics about the definition of the word recession, but some parts of this economy are really good. Between the White House, Joseph Biden, I should be specific, and Janet Yellen, who had the correct statement? Janet Yellen did. The President of the United States, Joseph Biden's comments were completely inaccurate, completely inaccurate. A recession is an economic term. It only has one definition. It only has one definition, two negative quarters of GDP growth. But if you look at the state of the economy and it looks atypical, not a typical recession, then you can explain it out. It's a recession, but certain parts of the economy are doing well. It's a recession, but it's not broadly felt or it hasn't really hit that hard. That's what Janet Yellen did. She basically said, I'm not going to deal with the word specifically because it only has one definition. I want to just talk about the specifics of the economy. The President of the United States, however, came out and specifically said, we're not in a recession. Let me tell you what the president said as his evidence of why we're not in a recession, and I'll give you my response with the facts. The facts do not support what the president of the United States said. He said we're not in a recession because now we have currently have the strongest labor market of a generation. No, in fact, you don't. 2022 now has the worst unemployment numbers of the year. In fact, the unemployment numbers are now much worse. The best labor numbers were in 2021 during the Biden administration. What's going on? 2021 had unemployment claims per week, newly unemployment claims per week in the hundreds of thousands, about 140, 150, 160. It was 160,000 new jobless claims about six weeks ago. That is a good labor market. Then what happened? About six weeks ago, we went to 180. That's not good. Then we went to 200. That is horrible. 200,000 new jobless claims is not a strong labor market. And then I projected it was going to go to 230,000 new jobless claims per week. It did. 230, 230, 235. What happened after that? It shot to 251. And 251,000 new jobless claims was announced last Thursday. And it, not this Thursday, but the Thursday before that. And that is the worst number of 2022. That is a worse number of most of 2021 as well. So the president said that this is a strong labor market, the best labor market we've ever had. No, the best labor market you ever had is not 2022 in July. 
And then Department of Labor said the following. On Thursday, they went back and adjusted last week's numbers from 251 up to 260. 260 is a horrifically bad number, folks. It is not a good number. For the White House to tell you, the labor market is strong. It is not accurate reporting by the White House from Joseph Biden's own mouth. It is fake facts. So what do we know then about this incredible market? And what do we know what's going on? Well, we have a lot of confusing data. And that confusing data came in late yesterday as the mortgage rates went the other direction. All I got to tell you is that if mortgage rates are falling dramatically as the Federal Reserve raises rates, it shows you how confusing this economy is. And that, my friends, as you know, is why you have to get a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. You need to get these forced stimulus checks in every U.S. state. Go right on this video, become a member. Join this channel because these are the only forced stimulus checks available. There are no others. There will be no others anytime soon. Go right on this video, become a member. Join this channel and the second half of this video, we're going to go over all these incredible checks one at a time. Let's get a preview of these checks right now. Done by a president by executive action in the month of May, these incredible checks give you huge financial freedom. What's at issue? These incredible four stimulus checks were done by executive action by the President of the United States, and you want to go get them. You deserve them. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get it. Rent, own, young, old, on benefits, not on benefits, get these credible checks across the board. Done by the President of the United States, they're about $100,000. $100,000, a cluster of checks, and I'm going to show you each of those incredible checks in the second half of this video. I'm going to go over why one viewer got 80 checks just seven days ago and why you could do the same. Done by executive action for the President of the United States, these are the only checks that exist. These are the only checks that exist throughout the rest of this month, and potentially next month, you need to get these big checks across the land. In the second half of the video, we'll go over each of these incredible checks one at a time. But one of the great things about the L8 newsletter, of course, is those L8 worksheets. Those L8 worksheets are in the third line of the newsletter, and tonight we know a lot of details to add to those worksheets. The worksheets are about the third line of the membership newsletter. Again, this is all created by L8 specifically for you. This is all proprietary, uh, great benefits of becoming a member. And those L8 worksheets, let's go over what we know to put in them tonight. You can print them from your phone or take notes on a separate piece of paper. Inflation, 9-1. We know tonight that inflation is not peaked. The PCEI released Friday, just 40, 24 hours ago, reveals to us that inflation's still going up. That's before we get the CPI in about two weeks from now. So that's great news for your benefits. Number two, recession. We know we're in a recession. Two negative quarters of GDP growth have now been posted by the U.S. economy. They're consecutive. That qualifies for the definition of a recession. But when you look at corporate recession, earnings recession, the geographical recession across the country, it's not equally dispersed. You have technology in recession in some regards, missing on top revenue, missing on bottom net income. You have travel and leisure having a wonderful non-recessionary quarter. You have pharmaceutical, and then you have home improvement. Black & Decker reporting corporate earnings, I think it was on Thursday. They're missing dramatically. So the companies that missed were tech, home improvement, and the companies beating were travel and leisure, hospitality, credit cards like Visa and Amex posted great numbers as well. Confusing. It is. And then labor. We're going to look to see potentially the jump of the labor market the other way again. We pulled back a little bit this week. Remember, it's a little confusing because they took the prior week and adjusted it up. So two weeks ago, we were at 260. This last week, 261. This last week, we were at 255. I think we're going to go back around 260. We may stay at 255. Federal Reserve. This is interesting. Federal Reserve is off in August. <laughs> and yet, if inflation is tracking higher and the Federal Reserve is off in August, imagine, imagine how upset they're going to be when they come back in September. And yet a new poll says that 70% of uh, analysts polled believe that the Federal Reserve is going to do a 50 basis point increase in September. Only 30% say it's going to be 100 basis is what say it's going to be 75 basis point. I believe it's going to be 75. Now let's look at that second page of the worksheet. It is the one that has been the game changer. It's a wonderful table. 
This is all the uniqueness of becoming a member. This is what you get as a member. In the, wor in the worksheets are in the membership newsletter, line three, line four. It's a table for you to keep track. Let me get in frame to keep track of all your incredible checks. Check A, B, C, and more. You keep track of the date you applied, how much you got paid, the periods of payment. Let me tell you the success story one viewer had a week ago. On a Thursday, she got an email. She's in Florida. Said, ma'am, congratulations. You've been approved for check B. Wow, congratulations. Story gets better. She got approved for 18 months. 18 months of what? 18 months of her mortgage. My goodness, that is not $10,000. That's tens of thousands of dollars. But the story gets even better. The viewer also applied with check B for all her utilities. If you have four utilities and you have a mortgage, that's five checks, five checks per month over 18 months, five times 18. You can do the math. That's not two checks. That's upwards of 80 to 100 checks. She got from check B from becoming a member of this channel by doing the worksheets, by taking notes, by watching the video and by putting it on her worksheets. And the hystericalness is that she had forgotten that she had taken notes of the worksheet. She rushed to look at the worksheets and remembered she had applied for all these other checks as well under check B. Congratulations to her. Now, the longtime viewer, Spelly, got approved this just a few days as well. And he took notes. He applied for check A. The weatherizing grant got approved. He also got some check C money as well. And his messaging to you, I love his messaging, is keep on pushing. When he put the check A in, he said that they had some sort of processing element that sort of, you know, could have discouraged people. Like, do it again, you know, cross your T, dot your I. He just stayed with it, sort of like how I just stayed with it and come out of focus and come back into focus. <laughs> he stayed with it and he got approved. So he says, stay with it, you get the money. Absolutely. What do we know about the next pages of the worksheet tonight? And these are very important. First, on the fifth stimulus, raise of your benefits, it's looking really good. Good. We're looking for that inflation numbers for July, which we're almost finished with, August and September. That PCEI released today, or at least after the close yesterday, but featured today on this channel, shows that inflation has not gone down. In fact, is it going higher? Great news across the board. Then the page after that and the one after that, which are gasoline and student loan debt forgiveness. First, let me go over student loan debt forgiveness. Um, breaking news on this story. Um, I believe this is accurate because it's from a, uh, a website that I follow for a very, very long time, and they're generally accurate. Apparently, the president has retested uh, positive for COVID, but I don't. I will not. Uh, it has not been confirmed. If that's the case, it'll give more explanation to why he may not have a ceremonial signature in place for a student loan debt forgiveness. The president is going to do ten thousand dollars of student loan debt forgiveness for individuals who make one hundred fifty thousand or less. Now, I've always said he's going to do it with a ceremonial signature signing with all the members of Congress around him, but he can't do it if he's in lock, if he's in quarantine, whether he is or isn't tonight or is going or isn't tonight and is tomorrow. What's important to note is that I think that would impede when the announcement happens. Congress has just a few more days in town until they leave, so that would be when the announcement comes. $10,000 for individuals who make $150,000 or less. Following the president's forgiveness for student loan debts for individuals who became disabled after graduation, went to work in the nonprofit or public sector after graduation, and people who were defrauded by the university. If you want to know more about your debt forgiveness, go to the Department of Education's website and pull up all the press releases from Miguel Cardona across the board. And finally, the last page of the worksheet, or the next one, this is the interesting one. Gasoline. Gasoline. Why is the price of gasoline plummeting in the United States, and yet the price of gasoline internationally is going up a lot? First, let me tell you the data tonight, and then I'll do the analysis with you. When Putin invaded Ukraine in about the second week of March, this is what happened. Price of corn, wheat, and all the agrarian commodities shot up. Why? Because Ukraine is the bread belt of the entire region. It produces all the grain that services all the neighboring countries. And then they couldn't export it because they're being occupied. At the same time, the price of a lot of products went through the roof, like lumber in the United States. Also, Gasoline went up. How did gasoline go up? Let's go over the two numbers. There's U.S. domestic unleaded, AAA national average, and then the more important number, because it's the one that determines the first number, the international price of Brent crude. Let's look at the two numbers. 
International price of Brent crude was about 100 before Putin invaded. Then it shot to about 110 within the first week, about 109. If you remember this channel, it's in the newsletter. It says, as of three, I think it's like 321, I list it every night. So you see what it was when Putin invaded. Then where is it tonight? So it was 108-ish when he invaded Putin, coming up from 100 before he had invaded. In the last few weeks, it shot all the way up to 120. Then Memorial Day weekend uh, dropped, after Memorial Day weekend, dropped dramatically to 98. In recent days, it has gone right up to 110 as of yesterday. So it's basically tracking back to the middle range of the height, meaning it's not improving, it's worsening. Let's look at the U.S. domestic unleaded. It's straight down. There is no tracking up and tracking down. It's straight down. Every day it drops 20 cents. It is now below the price at which it was when Putin invaded Ukraine. Let's go now to the analysis. Why is the, why is the commodities going down? Because it was a deal with Ukraine and Russia just days ago to allow the export of those grains finally after nearly months of war. And so they're getting that exporting. Number two, why is the price of lumber dropping dramatically? We, we really don't know why, but it may have nothing to do with Russia. Number three. Why is the gasoline going two different directions, and what do you need to know? The oil traders accredit the price of gasoline in the United States lower to them. They admit they're trading down the price of gasoline because of the belief that a recession has arrived and that if there's a recession, people will drive less because they have less money or they may be unemployed. That's not what the White House says. The White House says its policies have gotten the price of gasoline down in the United States. Who am I going with? The oil traders. And most oil executives believe the same. Ultimately, in 30 days from now, if you see the price of gasoline in the United States, not print crude, but in the United States go back up, you know it was not the president's policy, which is the release of 1 million barrels a day from the U.S. strategic reserves. It never really worked, and that it didn't get down initially from that. And there's no indication it ever went down from that across the board. Now, with that, there's so much to know. And in the big second half, we're going to go over these four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. We're going to go over a shocking, confusing point tonight of whether this U.S. economy is coming out of the bear market just after it nearly went into it. How could that be? For you, you need to do one thing. Go on to this video, become a member. Join this channel. And in the big section half of this video, we have a lot going on. You know it's a weekend, but the breaking news is far from over. Join this channel. And the second half of this video, we're going to go over all these incredible checks. You deserve them. I'll see you back in 60 seconds. As America's most watched show in prime time continues, is evenings. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And the biggest week that it was continues tomorrow with more data coming in all the latest details on this economy, the recession, the inflation, and the labor market. Join me all weekend long as I'll breaking news on the situation because it's far from fluid and it's far from over. 
Thank you for joining me, and thank you for all the incredible new members who have joined in recent days. Biggest membership rise of people in recent months. For now, go on to this video, join, and become a member. Get that incredible membership newsletter Monday through Friday, and get those incredible checks across the board. And we're going to go over all these incredible checks starting right now. In the month of March, the President of the United States did a series of executive actions, and those incredible executive actions established all these checks. And they're huge. I had two focuses for you because I care about you deeply. I wanted to make sure, with a recession then pending, that there's big sums of money. And there is. Approximately $100,000. Number two, broad eligibility. I want to make sure it's eligible for you. So single individual, $75,000 less, go get them. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get them. If you rent, if you own, if you're on benefits, if you're not on benefits, go get them as well. And with those incredible details, let's go right into the checks starting right now. The first check is labeled check A. It's a $6,500 to $12,000 for stimulus check in every U.S. state. And you want to go get it right now. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get it. If you rent, if, you, if you're on benefits, go get it as well. How do you get that wonderful check, eh? Step one, go into this video, join the channel. Step two, go into the video and join the channel. Did I say that twice? I did. <laughs> Step one, subscribe. But then step two, go into the video and join the channel. Then become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP. Welcome to the countless new members that have joined in the last 48 hours. Over approximately 200 of you. Please join right now because you want to get this money as is available right now. It may not be available indefinitely. Go down to the membership newsletter. You find check A. There it is. S click the link. It sends you into the nationwide website. Choose your state. Then choose the Weather Rising Grant. And this is the grant that Speller got, the Weather Rising Grant. But you're not going to done there yet. No, you're going to go get check B. This is the grant that the viewer out of Florida got. 80 plus checks. 15 to 80,000. Some cases even more. Four symbols check in every U.S. state. Single individual, 75,000 less. Go get it. Married couple, 150,000 less. Go get it. If you're on benefits, go get it as well. How do you do it? Join the channel. Go into the video. Join the channel. Then subscribe to the channel. You're watching America's number three most watched financial news channel, America, expanding to number two. And also, thank you to all the wonderful members who have upgraded them, their membership from Purple Hawk to Purple Power this last two days. And some of you even going to Calcino VIP. Go down that membership news you find Check B. There it is. Click the button for Check B. Send you into the nationwide website. And then choose your state and go get it. Look how well we've done. That's $100,000 right there. $80,000. 12,000, my goodness. But we're not done there yet. We're going to go get check C. Check C is huge. Approximately $45,000 across the board. Many viewers have gotten over $150,000. $2,000 a month over, over 12 months, MSE. Yes, that is due. And this is third stimulus. How do you get check C's? First, subscribe. Step one. Then go under the video and become a member. Join the channel. Go down to check C. It tells you where to call, what to say, and how to say it. It's for rent, utility, mortgage, assistance, and more. There is not one item that has paid more people more money than Shack C. It's had a lot of different names on this channel over the last two years. It was initially third stimulus, which it still is. It was previously second stimulus. And the viewership of this channel has gotten $50 million since this channel launched in spring of 2020, including Shack C's. Let's look at some of their success stories, just a few. And if you're on the live chat, post your success story, whether it's $1 or $100. Because when you do, you inspire other people. That's why Spelly said, I want to inspire other people. Tell them to stay with it. Nisi says the same thing. So does Lorraine and so does Johnny. Here is Nisi, Richard, Nancy, Mark, and Elizabeth. Want these numbers for rent? Go get check C. And then here we got Angela, Mark, Nancy, Mark's brother-in-law, $15,000 for utilities. Want these? Go get check C. The same brother-in-law is getting a quarter million dollars over 10 years of Mark's. Then you want a combination of checks? Well, Nisi went from $23,000 to $50,000. Mark went from $32,000 to $166,000. Here's Mark. He went to fifty, dollars then one hundred, dollars then he got check B, one sixty-six. dollars Lorraine, she was at one hundred five, dollars and now she's at one fifty. dollars what does Lorraine, Nisi, Margaret, Johnny, and all these viewers do together at the same time? They keep on getting checks. You get a check today, you get a check tomorrow. You keep on trying to get checks. Margaret sent me a beautiful message overnight. She said, hey, I had a meeting with one of the utility companies. I got more money. And she even got a, a local card uh, approved for some discount at the store. 
every dollar counts. Thank you for the update, Margaret. Keep on doing what these viewers do. Nisi keeps on coming back with more money, and Lorraine as well. Second, whether it's Nisi, Lorraine, Mark, or Johnny, or any of the Mark, they are in all the live chats. They jump on the live chats. They watch the videos. There's too much going on here, folks. There's a lot going on. Who would know that on a Saturday evening, I'm telling you that the mortgage rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage dropped astronomically after j Powell raised interest rates hideously through the roof. Confusing? Yeah, that's why you can't miss a video, because I don't actually repeat the data too much. Too much going on across the board. Here's what you need to do. Step one, go into this video, subscribe. You're watching LA Light, the number three most watched financial news channel in America that everyone's taking note of. So because this channel is after the push in to get into the number two position. A lot of major changes already underway. More coming. First, LA Light Live, which you might be watching right now, is now a 24-7 show. It airs around the clock with the feed updating throughout the night and throughout the morning and afternoon. Number two, the website that started it all 20 years ago has been repurposed. LALight.com is now featuring the latest news about your money. Meantime, coming to this channel shortly are two new channels, LA2 and LA3, and the refreshing of this channel as well. There's a lot coming to this family, and you want to be here. Go on to this video, join the channel, subscribe. Then there's a little button on the front of this channel. Make sure you hit that button so all notifications set to all on. You want to make sure you do that to make sure you don't miss a single video across the board. Meantime, details on the newsletter are also featured on the afternoon's broadcast as well. That newsletter is so straightforward. You deserve that money. Go get that incredible newsletter. It delivers money through uh, delivers to you at 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Go get that incredible newsletter. And we'll feature more about that to, tomorrow on this channel across the board. The housing market is really getting interesting. Why is this housing market becoming slightly skewed? Last week, not this week we just ended, but the week before that, the home builders posted the lowest confidence levels of many, many years. Tuesday, the new home sales were down. Wednesday, the existing home sales were down. And then what happened on Friday? After nearly two months of the mortgage applications, these are people applying for mortgages, dropped to the lowest level of 20 years, the mortgage lender said, you know what, let's drop the mortgage rate. Let's make it more attractive for them to get a mortgage. What's going on here? Ultimately, all I can tell you is that this is one of those events where you have to stay with the facts, the data, and sometimes the analysis doesn't really follow. All you have to know is that lumber has dropped dramatically for home, which is very important for home building, dropped dramatically. It's perhaps almost the lowest level of the whole year. Steel has dropped as well. A lot of commodities have dropped as, equally as well. Then the demand for homes has dropped the mortgage applications have dropped, and the mortgage rates have dropped. And you would think that maybe they're inherently causing the mortgage rates to drop to bring the buyers in or the applicants in to apply for the mortgage because they're not getting applicants. they got to make money. They have to have business. If there's no one coming, it equates to what I call the coffee bean. It's much like your local coffee shop that reports to you, there's a wind, wind, Hurricane, you know, tornado, any, you know, just a just an onshore breeze in Costa Rica. And for that reason, the price of a cappuccino in the store will be five dollars more for the next 30 years. That's what they do. You know they do that. They've been doing this for many, many years. Suddenly they report some some natural event uh, in in a country where you're not at. And then they raise the price of the coffee product and they never bring it back down to where it is. Well, you may think that maybe a lot of these home benchmarks were being caused by greedy people wanting to get more money. They raise the prices, maybe blaming supply chain when it was a supply chain. They raise the mortgage rates, maybe because they didn't have to, but they're trying to get more. We really don't know. Ultimately, all I could tell you is go with the data. Go with the data, and the housing market could turn dramatically in a different direction. Now that lumber prices, mortgages have changed so dramatically in less than seven days. There you go. Let's go back to the earnings and let's go back to the recession and let's also go back to the White House. On the earnings front, we've really seen that this is a very interesting economy. And what we want to know, and this is really the million dollar question tonight, million dollar question this Saturday, million dollar question tomorrow, Sunday, 
is whether we are done with the bear market as soon as we just, right, just entered it. What is a bear market? What is a bull market? Bear market means stocks are down. Bull market means stocks are up. Now, you may not be into stocks. You may not be interested in the stock market, but it impacts you. Because if the stock market is going up, things are in a good sentiment. People feel confident in the economy. People spend money. People get jobs. It's good consumer confidence to see a positive market. If people are losing their shirt in the stock market because it keeps on going down, then people lose confidence. So you need to know what goes on with it, whether or not you own a stock. Here is where it gets really interesting. It was back in the month of May when Walmart and Target reported those horrible numbers. We remember them because we, we used to do it on the live chat. I said, jump the live chat and tell me, is there less and more employees at the, ch at the checkout center? Remember when I asked that question? And that's when we knew there was a problem with Walmart and Target. Why right after they reported that problem, a lot of retail stocks dropped dramatically. And then the bottom came. Within less than seven days, the bear market, downward spiral of stocks, plummeted, fell expeditiously overnight. And we all knew we were in a bear market. It's confirmed we're in a bear market. Then we clearly understood we had entered or were entering a recession. A recession plus bear market is stocks down 50%. They are only down 20%. So we had all the analysts saying, well, we have a long recession ahead of us. We have a long way down. I said the same thing. Here's where it gets very strange tonight, and that's why you watch this channel. Out of nowhere, this is what it looks like. From May to June, straight down. It took it really bad in that middle part of June. Then from June to July, it was basically staying flat. And then, in literally the last 10 days, it's that recent. The last 10 days, it has gone straight up. In fact, it's gone so abruptly straight up that I actually missed it. A few days ago, I ran on quote on this channel where some analyst said, you know, do you feel guilty you missed the low of the stock market? It may not be back again. I said, we're in a recession. We're going straight down. What do you mean you missed it? That was what I said at the time. I, have been, I may have missed it myself because guess what? At the time, the companies were missing on those numbers, missing, missing over and over again, missing on top and missing on bottom. And their stocks were down dramatically when they announced the news. But then the next day, guess what happened? Some of the same stocks I have in this rotation of this graphic have now gone up $30 since the start of last of this week. $30 in less than two to three days. Straight up after it post after they posted missing revenue and missing net income. What can you say? Do I have an answer for this? I gotta tell you. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps for the first time on this channel. I'm speechless. I don't think I can tell you. I do not feel confident yet to announce the end of the bear market. Some analysts have now announced the end of the bear market. That clearly started in May, and this is only 60 days out. I'm not confident to announce the end of the bear market. Why? Because if I do that, then it negates my projection that recession is with us for a while. You can't say you're out of a bear market unless you believe we're out of a recession or the recession's not going to be here for any longer. If you're in a recession for six months, eight months, 12 months, then you can't announce you're out of a bear market. It makes no sense. So that is what I'm explaining to you tonight. There's two possibilities. One, this is a pop as we go down lower, or whether we're out of the bear market. We're now back in the bull market and maybe the recession is a very very short recession. A two-quarter recession, a six-month recession. What you and I will look for, and this is what I'm specifically looking for, and I hope you look for it with me, is the companies that give us guidance for the third quarter and the fourth quarter of this year. You and I want to know what's coming up later this year. Apple gave us guidance earlier this year that said the third quarter is going to be a lot worse than the second. Travel and Leisure said, yeah, we had a lot of great people buying a lot of expensive tickets um, uh, Memorial Day weekend. We don't see that happening later this year. So that is why we have to watch and see what could happen later this year. Because if that's the case, then, yes, this was not the end of the bear market. 
it's a continuation of the bear market. The biggest week it was was last week, and yet it feels like it's not over. Could the next week be just as big? All the latest details across the board. We'll be looking at that earnings recession and whether more companies continue to miss. We're still waiting for Walmart earnings. They've already got his down. We'll be looking at those unemployment numbers. I'm projecting we're going to go right back to 260, potentially higher. That lift of your benefits, huge news, great news, because guess what? We got that inflationary read from Friday. We still have a whole week of the stock market to adjust to, adjust to a higher inflationary read from last week. We have had now two weeks of bad housing data, and why the mortgage rates are now dropping, that is confusing across the board. We got a lot to track and a lot to see. Ultimately, you know how we do it. You need to get that four stimulus check that is in every U.S. state. Get that money right tonight. Because the money is available right here. There is no other money. There won't be any mon other money anytime soon. Go under this video to become part of the channel that is making history. Going from number three to number two. We're doing it as a family. Go under this video. Become a member. Join the countless that have. Thank you to the members who have upgraded from Purple Hawk to Purple Power. Stay with me throughout the night as the programming continues with Evenings L8 every night at 5 o'clock. Countdown at 6, stream stimulus at 7, extra at 8, 9 o'clock is, is sunset. The program returns at 4 a.m. with early mornings and 9 a.m. live on air. You deserve this money. Go get it. Keep it positive. Keep it focused. Know where this economy is. It's the data we are dependent upon. Always know the data because if you know the data, you'll get that financial freedom. And the place where you always get the news correctly, accurately, and to the point last week and this new week, is how I like. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, God bless. Become a member and I'll see you throughout the night. And if you become a member, tag me and I'll tag you back and welcome you to this wonderful family. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with Adelaide for more.